Can everybody see the uh, roadmap there? Everybody can see that? How many people in here actually trade the E-mini, the E-mini contract? Okay, and when you trade the E-mini, uh, how much money do you risk on each trade? Or do you vary it? Four hundred bucks, okay. Twenty points. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we? Uh, I'll go to I go to the slide presentation. We'll talk a little bit, and then if you want to, we'll do some live trading. You want to do that? Something different. Okay. All right, let me just give you an overview real quick. What I'm going to use to make my decisions is this roadmap software. And what I have here is, uh, does everybody see the E-mini right here at the, it opened at uh, 1840, it's currently 1841.50, right where I drew that line. Each point of the E-mini is worth 50 bucks. And across the top, I've got the Benny, I got the Dow, I got the Nasdaq, I got the DAX, which opens about uh, one o'clock tonight, and the Euro stocks. Over here on the right, I have a chart. We call it the Compass, and you can see that the market had a, a severe downturn today. Everybody see that from 1867 down to 1834. Okay. And then let's just talk about chart reading real quick before I get to my presentation. If you look at this, if you look at this chart right here, and use this as your base bar, right now we're in the top half and the current bar of the base bar. Okay? And so I'll come back around. Let me go through the presentation. We'll come back and maybe trade a little bit. Okay? Sound like a plan? All right. Let me get through some of these slides, then we'll do that. All right, RIFT. When I, uh, you know, when you trade, I think most people, I've been doing this a long time, most people really need to set some parameters on how much they're going to risk on each trade. Because then once you get your risk established, then you can set up the reward side, and then you're, and then you, and it's sort of like a batting average. You know, how accurate are you? Okay, if you're 50% accurate, and you risk three hundred dollars, then, and you make three hundred dollars, uh, then you're fifty percent accurate. You're basically going to break even minus some commissions, correct? So if you can be more than fifty percent accurate, you can make some money. You know, ninety-five percent of people lose money in the market. You got to ask yourself why do ninety-five percent of people lose money in the market? And the primary reason is they don't set up good risk parameters on the trades that they do. So what I'm going to do tonight something a little different. I haven't done this before in a while, and I thought we'd have a little fun in the evening. It's been a you know pretty long day. Uh, I typically trade early in the morning, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little trade tonight in the night market, and I'll come back around to that and show you why. A little bit about my background. I graduated from the University of Georgia, went to Oklahoma City Law School, served as United States officer. I was a former vice president, Smith Barney. I'm a current member of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and I founded uh, DTI 18 years ago. And I am a trader. Here's a couple of my books, Winning the Day Trading Game, Markets Never Sleep, and Trade to Win. They're available on Amazon if you have any interest in those. Who is DTI? Well. I started the school with the idea that if I could teach people what I've learned from the market, then I could help people. Uh, because, uh, you know, learning to trade is not an easy thing. Have you all found it difficult too? Have you found this a very different, uh, a very difficult career to pursue?
so. Well, you got to work at it and you got to work smart. Here's a picture of our facility in Mobile, Alabama. This is our headquarters, and this is where we do all our training. And uh, we built that in 2001. 2001. All right, so uh, get to know who I am, me to get to know who you. We put together a couple uh, bonuses tonight. Uh, we have an audio of the winning the day trading game, and we also have lessons and insights about futures, options, and stocks. And this was put together by a guy I trained to trade. His name's Jeff Smith, and it's pretty good. It's uh, it talks about some of the things he's learned learning the art of trading. And the second, of course, is the audio book winning the day trading game. The winning the day trading game is in eleven different languages, and a lot of people. Uh, like the book because it's laid out with the common sense approach. It talks about some of the some of the hardships and some of the things you go through when you're trying to learn this game of trading. Got that link there? Does everybody have that link? Okay. And what you do, fill that out, and we'll have Adam send you uh, send you those uh, downloads. Also, we have an app located on your, you can get it on your iPhone or you can get it on your Android. This app is pretty neat because you can check the market at any time during the day or night. And we put market insights out each day, pertinent market insights about each market today. So it's totally free. And uh, again, uh, if you go to the App Store, you can download it, okay? One of our students uh, put this together for us, and uh, and I use it all the time. And most people that I introduce it to, I get these emails saying, this is pretty neat. I didn't know that today was the day that Hogs was supposed to go up. I didn't know the day today was the day that Apple was supposed to go up. So anyway, if I had to describe myself as a trader, I'd describe myself as a tape reader. I read the tape of the tape. And that's what I'm going to do tonight. Uh, for you if I do trade live. Now where's everybody from? This is a this is a trade a thon and uh, just type in the city that you're from right now. I'm from Mobile, Alabama myself. Atlanta, okay. Went to, you know, like I said I went to the University of Georgia San Jose, Louisiana, Dallas. Is y'all's weather any better in Dallas? Uh, I've been having a heck of a lot of bad storms. Darnell, I know you, Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, Australia. We have a lot of Australians that we work with. Okay, years ago. I started in this industry working for a company called Merrill Lynch, and that company, uh, you know, sent me to New York and taught me all the all the ways Wall Street does it. And uh, and so I learned a lot of different things. I learned, you know, I learned technical analysis, fundamental analysis, learned all that stuff. And you say, well, Tom, you still use all that stuff here 30 years later? And I say, probably not a lot. Okay. Uh, I became a tape reader, and a tape reader is how I evaluate what's happening in the market. The crash of 87 changed that for me. In 1987, uh, I was a pretty arrogant trader, and uh, I lost a lot of money on that day. Some of the lessons of that day were that you can't have a lot of complicated stuff going on got to have simple approaches to decide whether to be long, short, or out. And we find that we find that if you keep it simple, it's a lot better than trying to complicate things. I.e., if you can if you can figure out the direction of the market, 
then you can apply that direction to whatever market you're trading, and you can make some money. Now, how did I find out about this? There was a guy at Merrill Lynch, and his name was Chappie. He'd been there about 30-something years, 30-something years. And I remember, never forget this, I was a young, young guy at the time, and he called me over to his desk, and he said, Tom, he said, you see all this stack of research information? And he took it and pushed it over into the trash can. He said, if you want to stay in this business and you want to learn how to be successful in this business, you got to learn to read the tape. I don't know if you remember this. Remember how brokerage houses used to have, have the uh, stock tape, the ticker tape go by Merrill Lynch's, all the Merrill Lynch's office had it. And they used to have it on CNBC at the bottom. They'd put the... They would put the stocks as they traded and see, you know, you'd see, see and trade at the bottom. So I learned to read the tape, and Chappie gave me some real insightful advice. I didn't listen to him until after the crash in 1987. Then I started listening to a lot of things Chappie had said. Sometimes there's too much of a good thing. Everybody, you know, everybody has, has a lot of charts. They have a lot of formulas. They have a lot of things that really sometimes get confusing when you're trying to make a decision, especially when you interject your own personal emotions into that trade. So what I tell people is decide what you want to do, figure out a good plan to do it, and then follow that plan. You'll find you'll do a lot better if you do that. Trading is an art, and it's something that you want to do. Um, there's no scientific way to which way this market's going to go. All you can do is go with the preponderance of the evidence. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you got to have the big picture. So let's t let's, let me ask a, f a couple simple questions. This is about looking at a computer, okay? I'm just going to ask a couple questions. If I said to you the following, where did the S&P open on January 2nd of 2014? Would anybody know the answer to that? If I said, where did the S&P open in, in January the 2nd, 1987, or not 1987, 2014, 1837, right now. Now, where's the S&P trading tonight? You know where the s and P's trading tonight? Let me refresh your memory. Where's it trading tonight? Well, the June the June S and P is trading eighteen forty one and a half right now. Eighteen forty one and a half. Okay. So, if I'd have told you one thing, I said always trade to the side. Okay. All if I said always trade to the side of that yearly open, and you would have took that advice in two thousand and thirteen, how would you have done? Not doing anything else, but if you just took that one thought pattern I just gave you. Trade to the side of what the S&P did in 2013. Anybody know how much the S&P was up last year? I want you to think about that question. Trade to the side from that January 2nd day. It was up last year, right? About 28%, I believe. All right, let's go back in time to 2007. You know where the S&P opened in 2007? You all remember what happened in 2007? In 2007, the market fell, right? It topped, it topped, and the market fell. Fell in 2008, trading to the side, you'd have been short in 2008, correct? And that market did not turn until March of 2009. 2010, 
you would have been bullish 2011, you would have been bullish 2012, you would have been bullish 2013, you would have been bullish 2014, you would have been what up to this point in time? So the big picture is up, right? Here it is, 2014, we're still above that January 2nd opening price, aren't we? Okay, let's keep going. You get the point here? Keep it simple. Now, you keep a trend line of anything that you're trading. You check this out for any market you want to trade, okay? Let's look at, just think of gold for this year. Gold opened this year at 12.02. Where's gold trading right now? Anybody know where gold's trading tonight? Yeah. So you'd have been bullish, correct? And still be bullish. So keep it a trend line of your trading vehicles will help you. And you go look at this at stocks. You can look at this, you know, with the different markets. But the key date is January 2nd, 2014 is your baseline. That's where you start your analysis at. Now, once you have that baseline the next increment of time you look at is the monthly open if you look at the monthly open then you say to yourself okay where did the month of march the s p open well on our software you look over there and you see the monthly open was where right there can you read it eighteen forty so if you follow this thinking and you say to yourself okay it opened it opened the month at eighteen forty we're at eighteen forty one we're slightly bullish above that number right now let's take it down and look at to tonight let's go back and look at tonight look at where it opened tonight 1840. So if I'm going to trade tonight, I'm going to buy the S&P. I'll just tell you that up front, and I'll give you some other insights to why I might do that, okay? Are you following this line of thinking, though, okay? You're going to keep things simple, and you're going to try to trade with who's winning and avoid who's losing, okay? And so by keeping it simple, you're going to be able to make good decisions. You're going to know where you're wrong. And you're going to know where you're right. Now, write this down. There's seven markets that you got to follow. The E-mini, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the DAX, DAX the European market, gold, crude oil, and bonds. By looking at those seven markets, Looking at those prices together, you can come out with a pretty good interpretation and know what to do. These are the key numbers that you will trade off of. There's other indicators you can look at, the issues, advances, that's the advanced decline line. Anybody use the tick in their trading? Anybody know what the tick is? Tick is a snapshot of the market during the day. How about the trend? These are all these are these are tested stats and, and tested indicators that have been used for years by people like myself. Okay, and and if you think about it, the trend is the advance advances minus declines over advancing volume minus declining volume, and you get a ratio. And that ratio tells you whether the market's bullish or bearish at the time you're looking at it. Now, I created some other indicators. The V factor, which measures short-term volume, and the T tick, which works 24 hours a day. Because the tick only works during the daytime, and the market's a 24-hour market. Now, here's what they look like on the roadmap when I bring it up and, and use them. 
and the one on the top was the E mini, the one on the bottom is the Dow. You'll see that the Dow is a little weaker than the E mini ratio wise, so the Dow's been weaker between the two. The significance of time. Okay. How many people here are day traders? How many people are swing traders? How many people are long-term traders? Let me ask that question. Because my rule is don't let Wall Street define what time you're trading. Let the price define what time you're trading. In other words, you really don't care if you get the direction right. Right? So here's a 24-hour clock. This is what it looks like. Right now we're in Asia. It started at 3.30, or excuse me, it started at uh, 5 o'clock, and it goes to 3.30 in the morning. And then we have the European markets that will start at 3.30 in the morning and go to 8.30. All right, I need to stop trading right now or stop talking right now and trade. I'm going to place a bid on the E-mini to buy it at 18.42. Go back over to the roadmap here. Okay. I'm going to buy the E mini right here at 1842. I'm placing an order as I'm talking to you. Okay, the order's in. I'll let you know if I get filled. I just got filled. I'm long at 1842. Okay, and I'll come back around and explain why I'm doing this in a little bit, but I'm long at 1842. Right? Okay. Where would my stop be if I risk 300 bucks? Let's do the math first. How many points would I risk if I was going to risk $300 on this trade? 300 per contract on this trade. How many points would that be on the E-mini? Six. So six from 42 is what? stop place and I'll go back to my slide presentation. Okay, got my stop placed and if I lose, I'll lose $300 a contract. Now, come back to the slide presentation. Okay, now I'm long during the Asian time period and I'm long at 1842. So I'm trusting the numbers. I'm trusting the fact that the numbers are above the open. I'm trusting the fact that the numbers are above the monthly open. I'm trusting the fact that the numbers are above the yearly open. And I'm long the market tonight in Asia. Okay? Now, the tape is art, not science. But I have a risk reward that is mathematical, meaning that as long as I can win, 50% of the time, I'm going to break even. If my accuracy is better than 50%, I'm going to make money. Okay? So it has a unique rhythm to it, and I'm moving with it. Okay? I've looked at the other indicators. If I look at the NASDAQ right now, let's go do that real quick. NASDAQ. Everybody see the NASDAQ? Everybody see how many points it's up? Look where its opening was. This is how it works. Okay, the seven sisters. Coming into the night, these, are, these were the numbers. And by the way, these uh, numbers in this column right here were based on the March contract, and I've adjusted those numbers to the June contract. That's how I got to 1840. But coming into, the, coming into the day before that big decline, you had a market that was bullish E-mini. The Dow was a little weak. The NASDAQ was pretty neutral, the DAX was a little weak, gold was very strong, bonds are strong, and crude was strong and then turned south, okay? But remember that 98.50 on crude because you trade 98.13 right now and I've got it bearish, okay? All right. Any questions about, any questions about me going long D mini because before I go into Nadex, I want to I want to give you another rule that you might want to learn. Okay. 
All right, let me teach you something. Everybody see this low right here on E-mini at 1834? Eighteen thirty-four fifty. See that low? If you add seven points to that, I have a rule called the seven eleven rule. Seven points on the mini, eleven points on the Nasdaq. Let's put the Nasdaq up there. The low for the Nasdaq was. 36.29, add 11 points to it, about 36.40, so the 7.11 rule went off, and everything set up, so I should make some money on this truck, and you need both, both to confirm, okay, so that's why I'm long D mini right now. Okay, it's simple, it's straightforward. I used to take from, uh, from January. I'm looking at the trend of the year. I'm looking at the trend of the night. I'm looking at the trend of the day, and I'm long right now. Okay, I've got my stop set, and we'll see how that works out by the time I finish. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about Nadex. Who's familiar with Nadex? Nadex is, a, Nadex is an exchange made up of binary options. And so if we went and found Nadex right now and we said, said do we believe that the, that the S&P will go higher in 1842, they would pay us money for that using a binary option. You can find out more about Nadex. Okay, by using the weekly trend to trade in, in Nadex. For example, the monthly numbers point higher, so you'd be buying you'd be buying the binaries to be above these different indexes if you put those orders in tonight. Now, anybody familiar with the Trader's Almanac? Trader's Almanac gives you the probability of each day being positive or negative over the last 21 years. Let's look at tomorrow. This is what's known as seasonals. Seasonals tomorrow, and you look at the average for the week, they're positive. Seasonals tomorrow are very strong for the Dow, for the S&P, and for the NASDAQ. And the two strongest ones this week should be the S&P and the Dow. So everything's lined up. You know, we're not taking things in isolation. We're just taking everything together to come to this conclusion. Use that information, okay, to go long. And this is what it looks like if you went to Nadex and how you'd place an order on Nadex. Now, you got three choices as, as a trader. You can be long. You can be short. Or you could stay out. Which one have I chosen to be in the market tonight? Long. And I should get paid if my analysis is correct. Now, let me give you some more insights. You record the prices on the first day of the year. You do this for every market you're planning on trade. The trading. And you can follow each market. If you would have used this for bonds from January to second, you would have been long bonds. Bonds have gone up this year in price. If you'd done this with gold, you'd have made money in gold. If you'd done it with the S and P, you'd have made money in the S and P. You'd made money in the Nasdaq. The only one you would have lost money in was the Dow, and the Dow has been dragging this whole year. Okay. So insight number one, record the prices on the first day of the year. Insight number two, when prices are trading at their highs, they tend to make higher highs. Let's go check that out. Look at the desktop here. Where's the S&P trading right now? I bought it at 42. It's making highs. It's gone higher, hasn't it? 
this is what I'm talking about, this insight. The market's pushing higher right now as I'm talking. Insight number three. If a stock price crosses 100, it typically goes to 110. Let me give you an example. Anybody familiar with Hershey? Hershey stock? Crossed 100, it's headed to 110. It's currently at 105, so you got $5 in Hershey. Now, if you study Hershey a little bit more, you'll know that Hershey is seasonally strong from January to May. If you study the last five years of Hershey, you will find out that Hershey should have an average gain of 24%. Okay? If it goes up 24% this year, you'll see 120. But this is how that rule plays in there. So I look for stocks that are crossing 100, then I check the seasonals, I check the yearly open, and then I will take those stocks and trade them. You're continually learning about these different markets. And this is what I'm talking about. I've been doing this for 30-something years. I see a lot of complicated stuff out there. But what works is keeping it simple. In fact, don't they have a don't they have a principle called the KISS principle? Keep it simple. Now, I'm not worried about the direction. I'm not worried about the fact. I'm not worried about the fact that during the day today, the market declined like this. I'm worried about what the market's doing right now. It's going up. Okay, every Wednesday there's a crude report. This Wednesday, crude turned negative, broke 99.5, broke 98.5. Crude's probably heading down to, my guess, somewhere around 92 to 95 before the end of April. That's experience talking there, but that's what I think. Okay, I got five stocks I trade. I'll tell you about each of them before I finish tonight. Apple, write these down. Apple, Tesla, these are trading stocks. Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Google, and Netflix. These five stocks are good stocks to use options with. In fact, I trade live every Tuesday using one of these five stocks. Now, there's a lot of you in here who've never heard me before. I don't know you. It's just that I've, I was scheduled to do this webinar, but I'm a trader, right? And what am I doing? I'm trading as I'm talking. Now, anytime you're a trader, you have to learn to take losses. I know where I'm wrong on this S&P. I told you where I was wrong on S&P. And I told you what I was exactly doing. I was buying at 1842. Let's go check it out and see how I'm, how I'm doing on this trade. Everybody see that? See that right there? Making a new high. I used to stop, didn't I? Six points from my entry. Simple, straightforward. Now, let's go look at where I'm going to exit. I'm either going to exit at 36. Let's go back to my roadmap software. It says right here, okay? It says right here, let me get my D-mini in where I've got the right market. It says right here, I can expect to sell this S&P that I bought tonight right there, 1855. How much money is that on a one lot? If you bought it at 1842 and it went to 1855, how much money would I make from that trade? How many points would that be from 1842 to 
Was it complicated? I had a method to tell me long, short, or out. I picked long, I got long, and now I'm making money. Simple, straightforward. Now, here's another insight. If you only have a $3,000 account, if you got a $3,000 account, then you can afford my risk of $300, bucks, can not you? Because it's, you know, 10%. Now, I always tell people to learn how to win from your losing trades. For example, if you were long crude because you thought crude was going higher, and you got to know when crude is going lower. The way you know where crude is going lower, always know where the yearly open is, know where the monthly open is, know where the weekly open is, know where the daily open is. In fact, let me show you something else on the desktop. This is crude right here. This is tracking all those on crude. That's why I say crude's bearish right now. On the, on the long term, it's turned bearish. Now, here's the problem with electronic trading. I love electronic trading, but here's the problem with electronic trading. You trade by holding a mouse, right? And it's so easy to hit the mouse to get into the market, right? And it's so easy to let your emotions take over and hit the hit the mouse to get out of the market. But you gotta have reasons and you gotta have a plan. And the plan is the most important thing to control your emotions. And then there's just some days you can't buy a trade. Some days you can't buy a trade. You got to recognize those days. And here's the way I recognize those days. If I lose three times in a row, I quit trading. And that's an old baseball rule. If you strike out, you go to the dugout. And I use that in trading. So if I lose three times in a row, I quit trading. It's better to stay in bed on those night trades. Now, Every Sunday night, every Sunday night, I lay out a plan for my subscribers for the whole week. Okay? And here's what I do. I say, here are the probability days that the market should be up. Here's the probability days the market should be down. Here's three trades I'm going to focus on this week. This is when I'm going to enter these trades. These are my targets on these trades. And this is what I'm going to do. I do that every Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Now, I just said with short-term trades, but those are my trades for the week, okay? And uh, somebody, who mentioned Amazon? Who mentioned Amazon? Somebody mentioned Amazon in here. Amazon, okay? Amazon, I agree with you. I think Amazon is a stock I'm long right now. Let me put Amazon in here. One of my trades is this week. Look at Amazon. Amazon is set up to run. You'll probably made it to 383 earlier in the day, sold off, and now it's ready to go back up. And you should see Amazon at least as a minimum. I think if the market goes up, the market doesn't go down, you should see Amazon go from 75 to 83 by tomorrow's close. That's a pretty good trade on Amazon tomorrow. So if you were thinking about Amazon tomorrow and you're thinking about going long tomorrow, you're absolutely 100% correct. I'm already long this evening, and I will buy some more tomorrow once it's confirmed. Now, if you would like to join me and go through the planning session, which, uh, which I will tell you, is, is a very valuable experience because you get to see how I'm going to lay it out and then you can see how you lay your stuff out cross register then you can register for Sunday night at 8 o'clock 
If you can't be there at 8 o'clock, go on and register, and we'll send you a recording of it. Then you can review it and send me emails and let me know what you think. So, when I started tonight, I said, when I started tonight, I said, hey, let's do something a little different. I'm going to actually trade live tonight as I go through this presentation. I went long at 1842. I'm long D mini right now. And I'm planning on I'm planning on trying to stay in this trade till it makes it to 1855. Okay. Now, if you got any questions about that, okay, if you got any questions about that, you can send me an email at t.fuzzby99 at gmail.com. Okay. Now, let's go back to the desktop. And I will take, uh, oh, Adam, where's the surveys? If they fill out the survey, won't you send in also the two-hour tape on the 7-Eleven rule? 99.9% .9 of all people out there don't even know about that rule. It will help get you into the market like me tonight, okay? Let me find that. Let me find that. Uh, did you have the 7-Eleven rule in here, Adam? Anyway, fill out this survey, and we'll also include, it's, just, it's like an hour and a half tape on the 7-Eleven rule, and what we'll do is send that tape to you. Hopefully, you'll get it before Sunday night, because I'll be talking about that rule in particular Sunday night, but if you go back and look at each day when you have a big sell-off, it's a good rule to go to. Now, let's go back to the desktop and look at some markets. First market we look at, I already told you what I thought about Amazon. Let's look at Apple. Anybody here trade Apple? I've been trading Apple since, uh, golly, since it was $7 a share. Does that date me? I've been trading Apple since it was $7 a share. I know a little bit about Apple. All right, so here's what I think on Apple. You can write this down. I think, first of all, the big picture on Apple is going to 545. I think it has support at 525, and the closer you get it to 525, the less risk you will have trading it to 545, okay? That's on Apple computer. If you look at Apple, okay, the monthly open, let me show this to you. The monthly open on Apple is 526, so that's where your support is, and I think you can, if it gets down there, to that level, you can buy it, and I think you can hold it to 545. It's a swing type trade. Probably best to use options on that, but uh, I'd give myself at least 20 or so days to get there. Okay, it might happen sooner, but I do think you'll see 545 maybe by the end of March. Okay, that's on Apple. All right, the next stock I want to talk about is Tesla. I bought Tesla at 125. I said it was going to 200. It went to 200. Here's what I think now. I think Tesla has support at 225, and I think that I think uh, I think you'll see Tesla make it to about 260. And if you can get this stock about 225, you should have a good swing trade on Tesla at that level. Keep in mind, it's got monthly support at 232, but it tends to overshoot. And that's why I would wait to 225 on Tesla. Let me keep going here. Google. Now, Google is a stock you can make a lot of money with if you follow it, okay? First of all, right now, 1206 is the monthly open. The week it opened at 1213. You got to remember one thing on Google. Google. If it goes above 1215, Buy it. That's all you got to remember. Y'all have a you have software to let you know if it gets that high, twelve fifteen. That's the price on Google. All right, uh, Netflix. Let me do Netflix for you real quick.
Okay, Netflix is a little bearish right now. Um, I might consider buying puts on Netflix if it breaks 425. Uh, it shouldn't go above 445. 445 is your resistance area there. And then the last one I wanted to look at, did Amazon, Netflix, Google, Tesla, did Apple. I did all five of them, didn't I? You want me to look at Baidu? We call this game Beat the Box. Okay, Baidu. 168. Turn bearish. If it takes out 164, it's going lower. Hope you're not long. Anybody else got any other stocks that want me to look at real quick? What do you know about leaps? Anybody know anything about leaps? Okay. Here's one you can research, but it might double your money. It's called FedEx, and buy a, two, a 2016 leap on it for about four bucks. You, you'll be glad you heard me say that at some time in the future. The 190 call, okay? All right, let me find something. Yeah, you, yeah, okay, you brought up Amazon, okay. All right, let me sort of review with you. Uh, this, uh, this Sunday night, I'm going to lay out the planning session for next week. Next week's an important week. Why is next week an important week? What happens next week on uh, Friday? Uh, LH, I said FedEx out to 2016. You can buy a leap, it's a January leap there. And uh, it should be it should be a, a, a good you can pay about four bucks for that leap, and I would hold it. Okay, okay. Next week is an important week in the market. It's the third. It's the, it's the third Friday of the month. So you're going to have a lot of these stocks get real volatile, and you can make a lot of money next week. That's one reason I, uh, I encourage you to try to make it Sunday night if you. Can, okay. Um, yeah, I'll put that up for you. Adam, is there a sign-up sheet for them to come? They got to fill out the survey. If you want the 7-Eleven uh, tape, you got to fill out the survey for Adam to send it to you. He'll get that to you. Um, is this how they register for Sunday night, Adam? Okay, good, good. All right, let's go back to the desktop. Any other stocks you want me to look at? C -E Peter, C E L. Oh, let me look at when. I got a story with when. I was down in uh, Orlando, and, and when was at $100 a share. What do you think I did with when at $100 a share? I bought it. And by the end of the, by the, end of the seminar, it was at 110 And somebody said, how did you know that? I said, well, it's in my book. I've told people this for years. Stocks that break 100 go to 110. We did it on when, and then we went and had a had a big uh, seminar out in uh, Las Vegas at the at the Wynn Casino. That was a fun fun time. Long and strong. It's a good stock. Wynn's a very good stock. Um, I would tell you that Wynn right now, in the current location, 239. It's a little weak. And if it takes out 230, it's probably going to go down and correct all the way down to 200. So you got to be careful with wind right now. Once it gets back above 240, you're probably in the clear on wind. I always like wind. It's got a good name, doesn't it?
Yeah, very good hotel to stay in. Yeah, I remember Apple used to split at 100. You're absolutely correct, Valerie. I remember that. Okay, the Russell. I didn't evaluate the Russell, did I? All right, the Russell. The Russell opened the night at 71.20. It's currently 72.30. Uh, it's above its monthly open, so it's bullish. Uh, small cap should do good tomorrow. People will be rotating money into it. I think you got a good play in the Russell. Should be long. Does anybody trade? Uh, anybody trade uh, corn? What's corn tonight? Corn is a, in a bullish move right now. If you look at corn, the month opened at 468. Oh, good. Yeah, IW. Yeah, IWM is bullish. Okay. Look at corn. Everybody see corn? If corn takes out 490, you can buy it again. Uh, did you take your profits, uh, Jim, today? Probably a good decision because it's got to get back above 490 to go short-term bullish again. No, I meant went long or buy that leap, the 2016, buy that leap, okay? Buy that leap. Now, here's something a lot of people don't look at at night, but if you look over here, how many... You know, once we get into Europe tomorrow, this is the London market, and the futures trade tonight gives an indication of how Europe is doing, okay? And so you can see right now it's pretty well unchanged. If you watch this and it goes above 75, that S&P that I bought will start looking really good, okay? All right, let's go back to risk. Do not risk more than $300 on any contract, okay? If you buy a stock and you buy 100 shares of that stock, use a $3 risk, okay? Because what that'll do for you is set you up to win. 300 I found, is a good psychological loss point for most people, and I've trained a lot of people. Okay, and I think if you keep the loss at 300, it doesn't take much to take you positive. Remember I said 95% of people lose money? It's because they let their losses, okay, they let their losses exceed their gains. And one way to, uh, you know, have a base point on your losses, okay, would be to, would be to have that 300 risk point. Before you, you, know, you pass on a trade rather than take it. Uh, Peter, uh, what you saw happen is here's what you saw happen. Uh, today was rollover day in the S&P. They went from the March contract to the June contract. So what you saw, most people reported, and this is experience, of course. But most people reported uh, and made that change over to the June contract, and it was trading at a disc. Uh, it was changing at a discount. Okay, it was trading at a discount. Yeah, three hundred dollars RB. Three hundred dollars. Okay. Now, let me come back over to the slide presentation. Let's make sure you got this. We're going to send you the lessons and insights about our futures, options, and stocks. That's made by Jeff Smith. Uh, Jeff is a brilliant instructor. Uh, I started working with him when he was 17. His father sent him down to my office, and uh, he knows his stuff. I also send you an audio copy of my book, Winning the Day Trading Game, and we'll include, it's not on here, We'll include the data and the stuff about the 7-Eleven rule, the thing I use tonight to go long, okay? Just fill out the survey link. Is Tesla bullish? 
been very bullish from 125. Uh, Jim, this is a real, I'm, I'm really, okay, first of all, gold is bullish. It opened at 1202 in January. But right now, the seasonals for gold are bearish, okay? The seasonals for gold are bearish, and, and that means you should get a correction in gold during this time period from, um, from really from March through April. But it hadn't happened, so it's diverging. So there's something happening out there that has an effect that makes the seasonals wrong right now. Because if you look at gold, uh, people are buying gold right now. I'm telling you, they're buying gold. And I don't think it's Ukraine. I think it's something else. Uh, the dollar. Okay. I'll give you my long-term opinion. My long-term opinion is you ought to be short the dollar. That's my long-term opinion. Okay? And, uh, and I believe that because of uh, a lot of things. But, the, you know, the U.S. dollar is, a, is in a 10-year downtrend. And, uh, you know, it's had a little bounce. But I don't think the U.S. dollar uh, is going to hang up here. I think it's going to go lower. That's what I believe. And that's due to our policies. You ask yourself, was America stronger 10 years ago than it is today? I would say yes. This is, again, that big picture view. And the numbers don't justify it, but you'll see the dollar, I think, weaken. Uh, this, from a timing standpoint, I would say about July. Uh, I think July might be a, might be a, a time period that, uh, that you'd have to uh, think the dollar would reverse in July. Uh, Bitcoin. I've read a lot about Bitcoin, but I, I don't think much of it. Uh, I think uh, I think they, they took a major blow with that investment bank uh, uh, doing what they did. And usually when that happens, when it comes to money or love, it ends it. All right, let's talk about... I got a little time left. I want to talk a little bit about a longer term view because this is something I want you to remember. Sometime between July of this year, July of this year, and October, there's going to be a historic buying opportunity for you. And, and this is through 2015. 2015 is going to be a big up year. Okay? And so, do y'all remember the 90s? the go-go 90s, when everything went up and people couldn't understand it, I think you're going to have that same type market as we go into 2015. But I think there's going to be a lot of down uh, that sets up that opportunity between July and, and October of this year. So remember those three-month cycles. Tune in. I'll update you. If you, you know, become one of us and become part of our, our crowd, you'll hear it day to day day you know, day by day. But that's what I think big picture. But I think 2000, oh, it's going to be up, Ismail. 2015, you want to know a little fact about 2015? First of all, every year for the last 100 years that ended in the year five, okay, every year all the way to 1905, okay, on that 10-year cycle, it's a 10-year cycle, has, has been uh, tremendously strong. So keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in strong. Keep that, keep that, keep that in the back of your mind. It's like a 100-year cycle or something that, I mean, it, but it's pretty, it, it's, it can be traded. And, yeah, this time could be different, DS, and what did I say? It's one thing to have a scenario. It's another thing to let the numbers justify. Let's go back to that mini miniature trade I did tonight, okay? What did I say tonight when I, when I laid out the long S&P? What did I say? I said, we're above the opening. We're above the monthly open. Put that back up there, S&P. I said, we're above the opening. We're above the monthly open. You've got an upward climbing in the charts. 
you got the 7-Eleven rule kicking in, and so I'm trading what I see. Look at where the S&P is trading right now. I'm making money on the S&P because I'm not only thinking it's going up, I'm seeing it going up. And that's what GS is saying. I'm trading what I see. That's how you make money. I've got risk identified. I've got my target identified. Nothing else to do but get paid. You know, you read about that stuff in books, folks. This is living color. I wanted to do something different tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. it uh, it's been a long day for me. I'm a really an early morning uh, trader, and I hope that uh, I hope that uh, you're able to pick up some of these insights. And and my biggest hope that you'll take the time, fill out the survey, and come Sunday night and see you next week. Uh, again, thank you for for having me tonight. Uh, if you got any specific questions, I'll do this for you too. Send me an email, okay? Send me an email and say, hey, Tom, this is my situation, and uh, I'll respond to you. My e Adam, put my email in there if they want to send me a personal email. I'll be glad to answer their questions. You can help me tomorrow. There you go. All right, you know what they say. End while they're still clapping. I'm ahead on my trade. It's a good time to end. We'll leave the extra time for the next presenter. Y'all have a good day. Thank you very much. And again, uh, if S&P, hey, do me a favor. If S&P hits 1855 tomorrow, send me an email and say, you heard it here first. Y'all have a good day. All right, everyone, testing, testing, one, two, three. Just want to make sure you can.